<laughs> Her name is Dolly. Seven months old, she may not be the monster imagined in a science fiction fantasy, yet the cuddly Finn Dorset lamb may represent a major landmark in the history of genetic engineering. On an ordinary farm in Scotland, scientists say a clone was created from a single cell taken from the udder of a sheep. The embryo was then implanted in a surrogate, making an exact genetic copy of its so-called mother. Scientists hail it as a triumph for research in aging, medicine, and genetics. These two monkeys are a medical milestone. They don't just look alike, they're the first primates to successfully go through genetic duplication. In non-doctor talk, they're clones. The two healthy monkeys are still just babies, but they're already making a huge impact in the world of science. Experts say cloning, combined with a gene editing technique, could produce monkeys replicating genetic defects in people. Then they'd be used for studies and testing. The monkey clones also raise the big question. Should we be cloning humans? Maybe if they're this cute. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Kelly Nealon. Chong Chong and Hua Hua are very special little monkeys. They're the first non-human primates to be cloned from a non-embryonic cell using a process called somatic cell nuclear transfer. The identical long-tailed macaques were born eight and six weeks ago. The Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Neuroscience in Shanghai expects more births in the coming months, though it took 127 eggs to produce the births. The work brings the prospect of human cloning closer, though the team says that's not their intention. Chong Chong and Hua Hua are being bottle fed and are growing normally. The headline on the other major news story today, to which we intend to devote some time, is very simple. Hello, Dolly. In February of 1997, a Finn Dorset sheep named Dolly sent waves of future shock around the world. The first living, breathing clone of an adult mammal. It's possible we're seeing a scientific explosion comparable to the atom bomb or the moon rocket or DNA itself. For many, it was a case of science gone too far. So are we acting more like the creator than creatures? Are we trying to play the role of God in all this? Predictions multiplied about just what this breakthrough would bring. Soon it will be possible to give her thousands of absolutely identical sisters. Animals could be cloned with human diseases and new therapies tested on them. Endangered species can take heart. This is not an elaborate, sophisticated technique. It means that any decent college or graduate school student could potentially clone a human being. Whatever became of Dolly, and all that speculation about the brave new world she ushered in. On July 5th, 1996, Scottish scientist Ian Wilmot received the news he had been waiting for. Lamb number 6LL3 had been born. First of all, I was immensely relieved that she was alive and apparently normal. There was a slight feeling of sort of awe, if you like, at the potential impact. Wilmot and his team at the Roslyn Institute outside of Edinburgh had spent several years trying to do what no one had before, to successfully make a clone of an adult mammal. Embryologist Bill Ritchie had lifted a single mammary cell from a six-year-old ewe and fused it to a second sheep's unfertilized egg, which had been stripped of its DNA. That's the method. The actual nuts and bolts of doing it is, is uh, a little bit more complicated than that. In fact, Ritchie had repeated the same delicate procedure over 400 times, and only one surviving embryo, number 6LL3, was carried to term by a surrogate mother. A lot of the cloned animals previously had died, born and then died. But this particular lamb got onto its feet very quickly and started bleating and looking to um, get its first feed of milk from its mother. After the delivery, 
It was John Bracken's wisecrack that christened little 6LL3 with a name forever etched in the annals of scientific achievement. I turned to my colleague and said, the lamb has been created from mammary cells and basically um, I thought it would be a good idea to call her Dolly after Dolly Parton. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain any more than that. <laughs> The few at Roslyn who knew what made Dolly so special were sworn to secrecy. We knew it was going to be a big story. We were going to get a lot of media scrutiny, and the top journals will not publish papers about things which have already been publicized. They managed to keep Dolly under wraps from July until February. Then, just days before the news was set to be released. Somewhere or other, there was a leak. And because it was published in a Sunday paper, you know, the thing blew. It's a very long time since a science story on Sunday made such waves on Monday. The news was that scientists in Scotland had successfully cloned a sheep in a laboratory. An exact copy made by a combination of genetics, biology, and technology. I think you would say all hell had broken loose. It was just bedlam. A brave new world has arrived with the debut of Dolly, a seven-month-old lamb. What has caused such a shudder in the worldwide scientific community is that so many scientists doubted it could ever be done. A frog had been cloned in the 1960s, but mammals were seen as too complex. It was a seminal watershed event, and no one saw it coming. And people said, this is a Rubicon that we've crossed. Do we really know where we are? Which brings us to the fundamental question, should we be applauding a mind-boggling scientific breakthrough or be nervous about where it might lead us? Picture a world where hunger has been wiped out by our ability to clone the best cattle in great number, but where war threatens because some future Hitler decided to make multiple copies of himself. What sensationalized it was that people began to say, well, could we do this with humans? And people tended to assume that this would happen. Cloning a human being is closer than almost anyone had even imagined. Now it seems that one day scientists could take a single cell from a more sophisticated creature, say like me, pull out my DNA, stick it in a new cell, plant the cell in a womb, and nine months later, out would come a genetic copy of me, a clone. The tantalizing prospect of cloning human beings soon overshadowed the true scientific promise of Dolly the prospect that scientists could one day use clone cells to develop drugs and other therapies in the hopes of curing deadly human diseases. In the scientific world, it was actually more of a next step accomplishment in some ways, but in the popular press, this meant that if Dolly was possible, maybe you could make an army of whoever your worst enemy is. Recent bestseller, The Day After Tomorrow, imagined Hitler recreated from his frozen head. <laughs> And it really extended to a ghoulish, icky misuse of science domain that people suddenly started thinking in almost sci-fi terms about what was now possible. Begun, the Clone War has. And that led to people thinking that we really need boundaries because scientists look what they can do. It's going to take a shape that's abhorrent to us if we don't get ready for it. If we can't ban the production of people just to serve as spare parts for the rest of us, we don't have much hope of doing anything in the world of ethics and law. President Clinton wasted little time coming out as tough on cloning. Today I am issuing a directive that bans the use of any federal funds for any cloning of human beings. It started to become politicized from the very beginning. You have presidential commissions, senators and congressmen holding forth on science. What should be funded and what should be forbidden? This affected not only cloning, but another recently developed and promising form of medical research using embryonic stem cells, the building blocks of the human body. These cells were generally taken from discarded embryos at fertility clinics, which created an immediate controversy. Dolly was very much caught up in the whole debate about embryonic stem cells. And so there was a lot of concern about that was really messing around with something really fundamental to life. Scientists have already cloned a sheep. Researchers are telling us the next step could be to clone human beings to create individual designer stem cells, essentially to grow another you. In August of 2001, President George W. Bush restricted federally funded medical research to a limited number of stem cell lines. 
many of which turned out to be useless to American scientists, who had been among the first to isolate human stem cells. The scientific community felt like this was really the very base of a tremendous revolution in our understanding and treatment of human disease. But we were being constrained, and that really had a, a very chilling effect on research in the US. It's kind of like we invented the first printing press, and then we decided, hey, we're not going to use it. It's too scary. And the Koreans and Indonesians are saying, hey, give it to us. <laughs> we got some books we want to print. While the cutting edge of stem cell research took hold overseas, the latest feats of cloning continued to capture the public's imagination. Bring in the clone. Numerous cloned animals made the news, as did claims of a human clone by the rather unscientifically trained Raelians. And inside your finger, you have small planets. Then, in February of 2003. Dolly the sheep has died. A scientist at the Institute in Scotland where she was born said she was diagnosed with progressive lung disease. She was only six years old, so here is yet another warning about cloning. Critics long argued Dolly would suffer from premature aging because she was made from the genetic material of a six-year-old ewe and saw her early death as confirmation of their concerns. Dolly died because of the lung disease that she had, a disease commonly passed between animals in close contact. It wasn't anything to do with her age. Although Dolly had developed early arthritis, a post-mortem at Roslyn concluded her cloning was not the cause of her death. But what happened to Dolly's legacy and all that speculation about a future full of clones? Dolly was this live animal that we could look at and touch and feel that caused us to imagine that there'll be people cloning in their sink, in their backyard, and there just wasn't an understanding of the level of sophistication and complexity around this technology. Few know those complexities better than Blake Russell, who oversees the Viagen company's cloning operation on this 300-acre farm in Northern Iowa. Costing upwards of $20,000, their services are used mainly by high-end breeders to preserve the best traits of elite animals. The number of cloned animals around North America, for example, would only number today in the small thousands. But yet, there would be literally millions of descendants of those animals. And those offspring are the ones that are ultimately designed for the production of meat and milk that we see on our table. It took the creation of nearly 300 living embryos to make Dolly. And 17 years later, the process is only slightly more efficient. The long odds of success have also tempered much of the hope cloning held for medical research, that scientists could create embryonic stem cells to treat diseases. It wasn't until May 2013 that scientists in Oregon finally managed to use the Dolly method to produce stem cells from a cloned human embryo. The whole technique still has this inbuilt inefficiency and we don't know why. We needed some alternative to the Dolly approach to creating these cell types. And that's what led to what really is a revolution in science. Japanese scientist Shinya Yamanaka rocked the scientific community in 2006 when he turned ordinary adult cells into stem cells in mice and then replicated that success in humans. It was a major scientific breakthrough that earned him the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2012, and also eliminated the ethical issue that he said motivated him, the controversial use of human embryos. You can accomplish all of the good things without taking on the baggage of the bad. And now you could actually do this in most laboratories around the world. Stem cell therapy is still at the very early stages of development, and the jury is still out on whether Yamanaka's reprogrammed cells or those cloned in Oregon using the Dolly method will prove more effective. Ian Wilmot himself gave up cloning years ago and is using Yamanaka's method in his research on Lou Gehrig's disease. In the next 100, 150 years, we'll learn to treat most of the degenerative diseases. It's because of our ability to produce these stem cells and study them, and it would be because of our ability to find cells to put into the patient. And all of that came from cloning. It started people thinking, well, if we can take a cell and make it into a whole animal, what else can we do with those cells? President Obama lifted the ban on stem cell funding in 2009, 
but Skadden says its impact on his field still resonates. It is something that is a little disturbing because it was a way in which science suddenly was fighting against non-scientific principles. That legacy is the one that I think is the most troubling. Dolly herself is on permanent display at the National Museum of Scotland. She is a favorite among both kids who never knew a time when making a clone was pure science fiction and adults who remember the stir in the winter of 1997 when Dolly turned that fiction into fact. Remember Dolly the sheep? Back in 1996, she became the world's first cloned mammal. Dolly died at a comparatively young age, having suffered from osteoarthritis. Her death raised concerns that cloned animals may age more quickly or make them less healthy than normal offspring. But new research published in Nature Communication says that cloned sheep using the same method as that which created Dolly show no obvious detrimental long-term health effects. Researchers studied 13 cloned sheep, including four created from the same genetic material as Dolly. The team ran metabolic tests and blood pressure measurements to analyze their well-being. The leg and we'll flex and extend the joints and make sure they have a, a normal range of motion in them. The sheep also had their joints x rayed. The results were compared to normal sheep, though these controls were younger. Despite that limitation, the researchers say the study strongly suggests the very act of cloning doesn't perturb the aging process. There was no evidence to suggest that these animals were aging abnormally or prematurely, they were, agingly, they were aging in a perfect, healthy manner. Experts not involved in the study says that conclusion may be premature. To really assess aging, they say, tests that measure vision, hearing, balance, and memory are necessary. The current work didn't do that. The cloned sheep are still alive and healthy, with no signs of metabolic diseases and normal blood pressure. Only one is showing signs of moderate osteoarthritis. Despite these findings, cloning can still be worrisome. Cloning is still an inefficient process, but still quite a large number of embryos that are transferred fail to implant. And those that do implant, there's higher than normal incidence of failure during pregnancy. But for those animals that get through this period, what this study shows is that they can live for a long period of time and be perfectly healthy. The story has taken us from South Korea to Scotland, from a tiny dog to one of the world planet's largest creatures. We travelled thousands of miles around the world to investigate the world of cloning. Look at her. Meet Millie. Officially the world's smallest dog. Her folks from Puerto Rico okay. can't live without her. Now they hope they won't have to. You love her. So much. Yeah. Yes. She's a really, really special girl. So special, they are paying $100,000 to clone her. We've flown to South Korea, where NBC News has been granted exclusive access to what amounts to a cloning factory. The doctor behind the operation rarely gives interviews, but he's cloned nearly a thousand dogs. Uh, 884. <laughs> wow. And today, Dr. Wu Sakwan is implanting a Labrador with embryos from Millie. That's the moment. That's right. In 2005, Dr. Wan was at the center of a scandal for falsifying human stem cell research. There's eye cream here. Since then, he has rebuilt his business, even expanding into cosmetics. Do you think people deserve a second chance? Mm, uh, hopefully. <laughs> He's begun cloning cows to produce high quality steaks at a lower cost. Okay. Simple as that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is to get better steaks. Yes. All of these? Yeah, yeah. Are all cloned? Yeah. 
and from these mammals to an even larger, extinct one. In this lab, Dr. Juan's team is trying to extract DNA from the remains of a prehistoric mammoth. Whether successfully, they wouldn't tell us. But around the world, in Russia, I meet scientist Alexei Tikhonov. It's all mammoth bones here. Mammoths, no. He searches for mammoths frozen in ice and time. <laughs> Professor Tikhonov is collaborating with the Koreans, trying to bring the long extinct species back to life. Mammoths lived during the last ice age, only existing today in movies. A whole baby mammoth. You could clone from a, a, well, an animal like if this. If you have such preservation, real hair, and hair, by the way, it's one of the best sources of DNA. The plan is to use Asian elephants as surrogate mothers. It wouldn't be easy and may never happen. But you'd like to see thousands of these roaming Russia again. Yes, of course. You must be mad. No, no. So could cloning one day be applied to humans? We travelled to Scotland, the birthplace of cloning. It was here, near Edinburgh, 20 years ago, that scientists first cloned a mammal. Her name was Dolly the Sheep. Dolly's creator says since then, human cell cloning has helped the study of diseases like Parkinson's, but cloning humans would simply be unfair. Clone of a major baseball player, you'd expect that child to be a baseball player. He might not want he might want to play soccer. And the scientist who's made cloning his business? Do you hope one day uh -huh. to be able to do this kind of work uh, with human uh, no, genetics? No, absolutely not. You don't? Human cloning, scientists say, would be extremely difficult. It is also illegal in many countries. But as for man's best friend, the technology devoted to reuniting pedos <laughs> with a beloved yeah. companion <laughs> is changing their world right now. How are you, everybody? <laughs> and some things you need to know, they say they have a 40% success rate at cloning those puppies. So even if uh, you do get your pet cloned, it may not be successful. And the dog that you get may not be exactly the same as your uh, original pet. It may have different colors on its uh, fur, all kinds of things. Can, can we go back to the woolly mammoths for a second? <laughs> what are the potential consequences of something like that? <laughs> it's, it's really difficult to do. And, you know, even if they manage to do it, how many of those can you clone and what effect would it have on the planet? I mean, there's so many questions raised by this. Yeah. Uh, like, why? In, right. Right. <laughs> why would you do that? Yeah. I guess for for some people, it's a question of just being able to do it. Mm -hmm. what, what kinds of uh, things can they discover as a result of that? But many people are opposed to it. As Brian Gumbel would say, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Double Trouble, live here with their mo his mommy, Danielle. Say hi. Good morning. So you've had Double Trouble for about uh, six weeks now? Yes. Oh, how's he doing? How's he adjusting? He's doing very well. He's adjusting. He's adjusting pretty well. So is it like having Trouble back again? Your, your original dog? Yes. I mean, I, I do know the original Trouble isn't here anymore. And I you do know, know that? Yes, I okay. do know, yes. Right, I do know that he died. Everybody okay. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Um, but he does, you know, show me a lot of the same, you know, characteristics that Trouble did. He does the same things that he, you know, he did. Like, what are the, some, some of the similarities? Um, well, when, he, when I play with him, he bounces around a lot. He likes to lay on the floor and extends his legs out. He loves going underneath the bed. And then when you go near the bed, he tries to get, bite your feet. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what Trouble did. Why did you, I, I mean, I, I'm a dog lover, uh, animal lover. I had dogs and cats. Uh, my, my Jack Russell is, is 14. I don't even want to think about right, what's no. going to happen uh, one day. But to, to spend that kind of money? Well, I wanted to do this back in 2005 when I first heard about it. Uh -huh. So Trouble was very much alive and healthy. Mm -hmm. And I read about it. So I said, oh, let me get some DNA from him. So when he had to go in for some procedure that he had to go in for anyway, I had asked the vet, I said, could you get me some DNA out of him? So he was like, sure. So this was something I thought of way before. I mean, Trouble wasn't even, he was still around. I wanted to actually clone him while he was still alive because I would have loved to see how they would interact with one another. But it wasn't really 
perfected and it was just something that was just being spoken about and not really done often. And how is Double Trouble different from, from Troubles? So far, I really don't see any difference. Really? I really don't see much of a difference. And he's so well behaved. Yeah, he's right. he's a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> and when you get home, because he is very much. Yeah, he's a, uh, he's a typical a puppy. puppy. Yeah. He's typical, likes to jump around. I think he's just out of his element, so he's just very like oh, like you know, looking yeah. around. Now you, you know, there's some people at home that are like going, eh, they're scratching their head a little bit right now. So oh, yeah, what do you say to those folks? What I like I said before, this is what I did because this is what I chose mm -hmm. to do, and I'm not saying it's for everybody out there to do. This was my choice, and it's what I wanted. Uh -huh. And you're happy. Very extremely. And happy. Double Trouble seems very happy and very chill. Are you happy? Right you're now. happy, right? Yeah. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to get in trouble because I'm going to smell <laughs> like him, and KJ's going to go. You <laughs> cheated. You cheated on me. Yeah, Danielle. Thank you very, very much. And Double Trouble, DT for short. Yes. Yeah. Same initials as me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just, it takes me a while, but I get it. And don't forget, I Clone My Pet airs tonight on TLC. Meet Zhang Zhang and Hua Hua. Impossible to tell apart, they are clones. Well, this is a big deal because we've been waiting for a long time to have uh, uh, clone monkeys. And for some reason, we, we could not get them. And this is a, a first and a huge breakthrough. Professor Jose Sabelli is an animal cloning researcher at Michigan State University. He's not involved in the research behind today's breaking news, but he knows the process well. Zhang Zhang and Hua Hua are the first primate clones produced by the transfer of nuclei from body cells into an egg cell. Tests show that their DNA matches exactly, just like identical twins. The births are a big achievement by researchers at the Chinese Academies of Science Institute of Neuroscience in Shanghai. They announced their breakthrough today in the journal Cell. Jose was tasked with writing a commentary article alongside their paper. When they showed it to me prior to publication, uh, it, it was actually, uh, I jump up and down. It's a breakthrough because now researchers can use monkeys as identical test subjects. They can compare how different drugs work, and study how degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's develop because they can compare the clones. Uh, for example, if you're trying to find a way to um, uh, create a, a mutation that will prevent people from uh, getting HIV, you can do it, you can try it. Uh, you can also create animals that will develop uh, Parkinson's disease uh, either early in life or late in life. Back in 1996, Dolly the sheep was the first mammal to be cloned from an adult cell. Researchers removed the nucleus from an egg cell and replaced it with the nucleus from an adult cell. Then they implanted that cell into a surrogate mom. Since then, about 20 different animals have been cloned this way. To extract the nucleus, the cell is carefully aligned so that when it's poked by a sharp pipette, it takes out just the nucleus and very little surrounding molecules that influence cell development. Then, the target cell is carefully aligned and the nucleus is inserted. Up until now, it's been impossible to clone primates, like monkeys and us. Cloning uh, has, has uh, been particularly difficult because when you use somatic cells, these cells are body cells that come from the skin or the liver or the blood. Uh, those cells tend to remember where they came from. Now, with the new technique, they put in an enzyme into this egg that will make sure that those cells that you put in will completely erase their memory and be an embryo very quickly. So, what about human cloning? The implications of this work on human cloning, I don't think we're there yet. The efficiency of these procedures is very low. You have to have about 10 uh, embryo transfers, put these embryos in, in 10 uh, females to get one animal, so it's a 10% efficiency, and that's extremely low. And there's a lot of fetal losses, and uh, so a lot of miscarriages. So that, that's, for human, is not acceptable. In the meantime, the science of animal cloning has a new face, two of them in fact, and they are very cute. The researchers will continue to monitor their development with blood tests and brain scans to see how identical they stay over time. Aww, animals. Are humans next?
China successfully cloned monkeys using transfer DNA, marking the first time such a feat has been achieved and possibly paving the way for human cloning. Scientists in Shanghai have cloned two genetically identical macaques using the same technique that produced Dolly the sheep. Somatic cell nuclear transfer involves taking the nucleus of a cell, which contains its genetic material, and injecting it into an egg that has had its own nucleus removed. The egg cell is then treated with enzymes to stimulate embryo development, just like a naturally fertilized egg. In all, the researchers created 109 embryos and implanted them into 21 surrogate monkeys, resulting in six pregnancies, but only two live births. The macaques named Zhong Zhong and Hua Hua aren't the first primates to be cloned, though. That distinction belongs to Tetra, a rhesus monkey created using a simpler embryo-splitting method. The Chinese team believes the monkey clones could be useful in medical research, specifically in the study of genetic diseases like Parkinson's or autism. Cloning, yay or nay? All in the name of science. A team of scientists has recloned the world's first dog clone in a bid to find out if the process has an impact on a clone's health or lifespan. Dog clone Snuppy was created in 2005 using a stem cell from an Afghan hound and born via a surrogate Labrador mother. The original dog, named Tai, died from cancer when he was 12 years old. Snuppy would later live to age 10 before also succumbing to cancer, though not the same kind. When Snuppy was 5 years old, researchers collected his stem cells while also taking eggs from female dogs and taking out their nuclei. Using a process called somatic cell nuclear transfer, nuclei from stem cells were transferred into the empty eggs, then stimulated into dividing, creating over 94 embryos. The embryos were implanted into surrogates, resulting in the birth of four live reclones. Though one died from diarrhea days after birth, the remaining three are now nine months old and still healthy. Researchers say they will closely monitor the puppies and measure virtually all aspects of their lives, including growth, metabolism, immune system, and disease development. Stay tuned! Human cloning the cure for diabetes Scientists in New York announced on Monday that they had used human cloning techniques to create stem cells able to produce insulin, effectively curing diabetes. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the body's immune system destroys insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas, resulting in insulin deficiency and high blood sugar levels. For the first time, scientists have successfully replaced the damaged DNA of a type 1 diabetes sufferer with the healthy genetic material of an infant donor. The hope is that when these new cells are injected back into the diabetic patient, they will begin to produce insulin. The procedure would prevent the need for daily insulin injections and effectively cure the disease. Man may never again have to fear losing his best friend. Korean company Suam Biotech says it can clone dogs and to prove it, it's holding a competition to give one UK resident the chance to copy a pooch. The cloning process involves first obtaining skin cells from a living dog or one that died within the last five days. The DNA containing nucleus is then extracted from the donor dog's cell. The nucleus of a surrogate egg from another donor is enucleated and fused with the donor nucleus. The fused cell begins to multiply and grow. The fusion process eventually produces a cloned embryo. The embryo is then placed in a surrogate dog and the clone pup is delivered around 60 days later. Suam Biotech claims it can clone any breed, size or shape of dog for around $100,000 per dog. Scientists hope the technique can one day be used to clone specialized rescue dogs or endangered animals. A group of researchers from Oregon Health and Science University succeeded in using cloning to create human embryonic stem cells paving the way for development of replacement tissue to treat diseases. The process involved first taking skin cells from a patient with a genetic disease. Next, an unfertilized donor egg was stripped of its DNA. The skin cell was then placed within the cell membrane of the donor egg. Electricity was used to prompt the egg cell to divide and grow into an embryo. Stem cells were then extracted. These can be used to grow muscle, liver, and nerve cells which can be transplanted into the original patient without risk of rejection. Opponents have called for a ban on the experimentation of human embryos, calling the practice unethical.
would you clone yourself if you could? Scientists just broke a big barrier that could eventually lead to cloning humans. Nicole Brewer is here now with the breakthrough and what it means for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it means scientists are one step closer to mm -hmm. cloning our kind. And while it may sound exciting to some, it makes plenty of other people a little bit uncomfortable. These baby monkeys represent a major scientific breakthrough. The first primates to be successfully cloned. Well, that's amazing, but I think it makes sense with all the scientific advances. At seven and eight weeks old, Zhang Zhang and Wa Wa are products of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which used cloning DNA from a monkey fetus to create the female twins. Not religious but it's overstepping the boundary. I think it's about the greater good. Controversy surrounding cloning is nothing new. Folks have been debating it ever since Dolly the Sheep became the first mammal copy back in 1996. You're more detached when it's a mammal, but when it's, when it's primate, you know you're the next. And that's the problem. Since humans belong to the primate family, the procedure could be used to clone people. I only need one of me. I don't, I don't need to be cloned. <laughs> These scientists say their goal is to produce genetically identical monkeys for use in medical research and insist there's no intention of tampering with human life. People try to tend to push the limits, so who knows what will happen. If they can clone a heart, they can clone a lung, they can clone a liver, I think the storyline changes and people will be more accepting of it. Now, researchers hope the advancement will be used as a way to better understand human disease, such as autism, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. But the people for the ethical treatment of animals, or PETA, are calling it a, quote, horror show, a waste of lives, time, and money. Mm -hmm. so a lot of strong feelings sure. Sure. surrounding yeah. this it issue. It does elicit those kinds of oh, strong yeah. feelings. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, it's sure. freaky. For sure. <laughs> All right, Nicole, thanks. thanks. Nicole. I'm Lynn Bowie. For the first time ever, Chinese researchers have cloned two monkeys. The identical monkeys were born six and eight weeks ago and show every sign of being normal for their age. Researchers used a method that created Dolly, the cloned sheep. That method has worked on cows and mice in the past, but monkeys proved to be more difficult. This could open the door to new methods of customizable gene experimentation. More on WJZ and WJZ.com. Meet Zonzon and Hua Hua. These macaque monkeys are more than just a couple of cute faces. They are the first primates cloned using the same method that made Dolly the sheep. The findings were published in this week's journal, Cell. Scientists say it's an important breakthrough considering their close relations to humans. We've been waiting for, for this work uh, a long, long time, um, almost 20 years after Dolly the sheep. And, uh, and I can tell you, um, Sometimes the public is not aware of, of uh, how much uh, non-human primate research have helped human health. And so this, this would open the door to new therapies. Dolly the sheep was the first mammal to be cloned with DNA taken from an adult. It was announced in 1997. About two dozen mammal species have since been cloned through a similar process. These two were born genetically identical within the last eight months at the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Shanghai. The cloning process begins with a monkey egg and a fetal monkey cell that has been cultured in a lab dish. Researchers remove the nucleus, which contains the DNA, from the egg. The other cell is slipped into the egg, so it replaces the egg's nucleus with its own. The egg then divides and grows into an early embryo, which is implanted in a monkey and grows to term. It took 127 eggs, of which 79 were implanted as embryos, to produce two babies. Uh, so I, I think that they did an incredible amount of, of work. Uh, there's still things that we can improve for sure. And um, this is going to be one of those seminal papers that we're going to be referring back to for many years to come. Scientist Jose Cibeli at Michigan State University says if the process becomes efficient enough in monkeys, the public could face a big ethical dilemma whether to adapt it for use in humans. Currently, mainstream scientists and ethicists generally oppose trying to make human babies from cloning, citing safety and other concerns. This, in a sense, will we'll start the conversation again about whether we want to use cloning as a way of reproduction in the future or not. So far, the baby monkeys are growing normally. The group is expecting to clone more macaque over the coming months. The Chinese researchers say clone monkeys would be useful for medical research. Carrie Antelfinger, Associated Press.
New at noon, pet owners in China are being offered a chance to clone their best friend, but it doesn't come cheap. A dog trainer in Beijing paid tens of thousands of dollars to copy his celebrity pooch. CBS 4's Tina Krauss has the story. <laughs> this one foot tall, clever canine named Juice is a regular on movie sets in China, starring in dozens of film and TV productions. His master, He Chun, says Juice has a lot of fans. He's a piece of intellectual property with social influence. That's why He Chun paid more than $55,000 to clone his prize pooch. Nine year old Juice was neutered at a young age and couldn't reproduce. So scientists took skin samples to isolate his DNA, then fertilized an egg for a surrogate mother dog. This beagle gave birth to little Juice. His trainer says he looks just like Juice did when he was small. The Chinese biotech company called Synagene says the cloning market is growing fast as more and more animal owners want their pets to stay in their lives longer. The business is in its initial stages but plans to eventually offer customers a chance to make changes to their pet's DNA. Little Juice's owner says, my friends say this is the most expensive mutt there is. He Chun says he's happy with his investment. And while Little Juice hasn't entered the world of show business just yet, he sees lots of potential. Tina Kraus, CBS News. Earlier this year, a Shanghai lab produced the world's first monkey clones. More controversial, a scientist claimed last month he used gene editing technology to alter the embryonic genes of twin girls. Take a look at the two monkeys you see behind me. They're clones. Yeah, for the first time ever, scientists in China cloned primates. They use the same method that made Dolly the sheep 20 years ago, and this breakthrough could help doctors tweak genes and treat many diseases, such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and cancer. But it is still very controversial. Monkey see, monkey too. That's what scientists are saying after the first successful clone of a primate. For the first time since the cloning method that produced Dolly the sheep more than 20 years ago, scientists have cloned two healthy monkeys. The procedure was technically challenging, of course. It took 127 eggs to get the two babies. Now that primates have been successfully cloned, scientists say they are a step closer to being able to clone humans. But many people and U.S. federal regulators are concerned about both the safety and the ethics of cloning people. Meet Zhong Zhong and Hua Hua. These twin long-tailed crab-eating macaques are being hailed as a scientific breakthrough. This laboratory in China has succeeded where other researchers have failed. Scientists at the Institute of Neuroscience in Shanghai created the first cloned monkeys using a technique called somatic cell nuclear transfer. The cloning process began with a monkey egg and a monkey fetus cell. The genetically modified process in the laboratory then develops into an embryo, which was then implanted in a monkey. Eventually, the babies were born. What's novel about this process is the nuclei were transferred from fetal cells rather than adult ones. That's different from the world's first cloned animal, Dolly the sheep, which was created from only adult cells. China is the first to successfully clone primates using this method. However, scientists are criticized for pushing ethical boundaries. The Chinese process took 127 eggs to produce two monkeys. Animal rights activists oppose medical research on monkeys. And I should point out that people may argue that the, it's not ethical to use monkey. There is a Parkinson's disease model uh, in monkey, which has been used quite effective, but they need to use a large number of monkeys. Uh, in the United States alone, they are importing 30, 40,000 monkeys each year by drug company. Other researchers are celebrating how cloning primates could help preserve species on the brink of extinction. The other use is, you know, many primates are on the border of extinction. Gorillas, chimpanzees, many other primate species are under pressure. Cloning may give you a way to maintain the species. Given the progress in cloning primates, will people be next? We will never try, and we have no, I don't think there's anybody are willing to do human cloning, and the society will not permit it. But like, like any new technology, once it's appeared, there's always possibility of misuse. For now, China is celebrating the breakthrough. The newborns are just six and eight weeks old. 
It's hoped that they will lead long and healthy lives. Hannah Hoxter, Al Jazeera.